Hello, and welcome to another far-fetched story by R.E.M. Verberg. The Turning is a melancholy, fantastical exploration of love and how far people are willing to go for it. This 10-minute story will be read to you by Kayla Ringelspaw. If you want to know more, please visit remverberg.com. Enjoy, thank you for listening, and have a great day. The Turning She sat. She waited. Everything was quiet. The layers upon layers of skin weighed her down, making it hard to move her head. She could only look at what was right in front of her. The eastern edge of the village, the fields, stretches of heavy-headed green stalks sleeping soundly. Behind them, darkness. The future. The end. Before long, darkness would turn into a forested edge, with the sun rising above it, and once dawn drew that curve between light and dark, she would turn as well. It had been a terrible walk, even though it was only a short distance from her house in the heart of the village. She had come alone in the night. Her legs hurt with every step, just like the rest of her, they were no longer useful. The last remaining point of her existence was to go and sit down, here, on this mound. Everything else had been stripped away. She thought she'd be at peace with that. Maybe she was. It was hard to tell. All she knew was that the world was changing, and in turn, it required a change from her. This was now her purpose. Once there had been other purposes, and to her own surprise, She found herself clinging to them, but in the end, she had still come. She stared ahead into the night, at the one curve she could not yet see, but knew by heart. The shapes of the treetops, the blackberry bushes at the edge of the fields. Countless times she'd passed those bushes, in a body that was no longer hers. A younger, nimbler body that had flirted with boys made love, carried a child, a body that would stay here on this mound. That was the way of it, the tapered end to her hopes and dreams. That was how women loved. Everything was measured out in curves here, even her memories. They came and went like waves lapping at a shore. The man whose face she knew like her own, who had suffered her cumbersome presence in his cramped hut for the last few years, became the child she'd once taken by the hand to look for Junebug. Before that, he'd been the baby born in midwinter, a fussy child, but precious to her, like a jewel where others saw a pebble. Her smiles were shy and reached all the way into her heart. She'd sung to him, melodies stolen from a dream. Her own people had no songs. She focused on the horizon, on the coming light. Her senses were attuned to every small change. The mass of her body engulfed her, a pillow that smothered her from all sides. Even lifting her arms was hard. The memories ebbed, leaving a wordless ache. She had expected peace, but there was only emptiness. Something important would be taken from her, an essence, a jewel of her very own, something as personal as her name. Why did she have to give that up? She shifted her weight. Somewhere inside the bulk of her body, her joints creaked in protest. Somewhere inside her chest, her heart started pounding, no. Another wave flooded her. It took her back to the beginning, helping to dislodge the wheel of a cart on a field. Laughter all around her, sharp smells of sweat and the harvest feast. Then, simple, fresh, unexpected, the taste of her first blackberry. And finally, a dream, a stolen moment in the dark. The man she had only known for a few days. His shoes kicked off by the end of the bed, somehow such a part of him that she had teared up just looking at them. The curve of a bony shoulder in the dark. Another memory. Another rhythm. 
She felt sweat on her forehead, but didn't wipe it off. Balmy air stroked her skin. She could not tell how long she had been sitting here, looking into the future, looking back in time. Dawn was fast approaching. Her sitting, although motionless, was no longer passive. With every breath, she fought the urge to run. In spite of her bulk, she could still move. She could still go. But where? Those memories were places she held inside of her, not places that existed in the world anymore. Life moved and passed, and what else was at the end but another curve? From one act of love to the other. A tear ran down her cheek. Nobody had come to see her off. The last walk had to be made alone. Of course, her son knew. He had built this mound himself. During the last few days, he had not been able to look her in the eye, even though she told him it was all right. It was just a thing women did. But sitting here, now, she felt her bones protest inside the pile of flesh she had become. A half-forgotten strength resurged. She might be old, but she was not dying. The turning was not an obligation. Most did it, but not all. The ones that did not were often called selfish. After all, what else was the use of an old woman? She could not merely be a house for memories, a self-contained unit. She had to contain others. That was the way she would be honored and live on. She had always believed that. It had been easy. When she was young and could still run through the fields, the thought of turning had been an abstract point on a distant horizon. Even as she lived longer and became heavy with memories, she had kept the idea at bay. After all, she loved her son, and he loved her. Loving, was that not enough? Was she not enough? There was an essence to her, even now, a core as precious and vivid as the June bug she'd once taken him to see. Maybe it was just impossible to tell another's essence, to fully see its worth. Maybe it was easier for her son just to see her as a mother and value her for what a mother did, especially once his wife had become pregnant and another curve had begun. Her left arm grew numb. Her cheeks were cold like stone. She couldn't feel her tears anymore. In the distance, the sky started to lighten, and suddenly her heart jumped up. Love, Jewel, Junebug, they were all the same. For one brief moment, she sat fully inside herself and understood that no matter what she gave up, it could never diminish her. She heard the music again, that one night so long ago, when she traveled to the city and listened to a man playing the lute in the corner of a tavern. After he had finished, she'd gone to thank him for his songs. Her market money clutched in a sweaty hand, she'd offered to buy him a drink. At first, he hadn't heard her over the clamor. When he did, his shy smile had lit up the room. It was the smile of her son. She squinted, but couldn't tell if it was getting lighter. A numbness slowly spread through her legs. She resisted the urge to test one, see if she could still move it. Her time was running out. Even though she couldn't see, she could feel the sun approach, calling her body heavy weight to heavy weight. She fought to remember her own strength, her unique being. One last time, the curve of a bony shoulder in the dark, the smell of midwinter, the song. Her son had not stopped her. He'd looked at her, struggling to get up from her fortified chair in the corner, and saw a shell, filled with his own wants and needs. She did not blame him. He did not know her essence, nor did she know his. But he would know that she'd done it for love. She heard a voice in the twilight. You're crazy. Are you really going to go through with this? One last time she was drawn back to a bed in a sparsely furnished room, her musician sitting up next to her, clutching her by the shoulders. You're crazy, he repeated. You know what they'll make you do. Come with me. She shook her head. She'd made her choice. 
Even without feeling them, she was aware of the tears on her cheeks. She brushed them away, brusquely, with the slender hand from another life, a hand she could no longer move. In the distance, a light climbed up from the trees and painted the last curve of her life. Slowly, her bones turned to stone, her flesh to mud. With what was left of her, she felt it happen. In a few hours, her son would walk over with his pregnant wife. They would inspect what she'd become. The opening where her heart had once been, the broad, round base of her torso, the roof that had once been her head. They would take their lives and move into their new home. Her heart beat one last time. Then, no more.